and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Jarrah Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Daniel Ward and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Greg Davis. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of Prime Minister Gordon Brown this week. <laughs> but what does BGID stand for? Is it, Is it big... Bargains Galore in Debenhams? <laughs> Is it Big Grovel, I'm the Daddy? <laughs> Is it, <laughs> yes, Is it... Sorry. Blair Gone, I'm Disaster? <laughs> Is it Bran Gets Iranians Dancing? <laughs> yeah. Is it Brown Goes Into Dundee? <laughs> Things have gotten tough, haven't they? Yeah. Blair guaranteed infamous death. <laughs> Shot from a moving military helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Daniel's right, it's bored Gordon initiates drive-by. So is it bitches get indoors? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually the only time I've ever seen him with a genuine smile sat beside. Normally when he smiles, he looks like he's trying to shit a sea urchin. <laughs> It, it, it does look strange, I'll give you that. Uh, 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 Bring uh, Galloway in, darling. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it Brown gives Iran deadline? Is it oh, you go sensible now, suddenly. <laughs> What's going on? I've <laughs> never answered correctly in this ever. And now it makes you look like a point whore for some reason. <laughs> You've suddenly decided to change. You've actually really thrown me there by going for the correct... Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. Frankly, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> it's Brown gives Iran deadline. On his three-day visit to the Middle East, Gordon Brown has warned Iran that it must end its nuclear ambitions in a fortnight or face international action of no predetermined nature. Uh, he's, actually, he's actually said that he's going to ruin their economy. Perhaps by becoming their chancellor for a few years. <laughs> he gave us incredibly boring speech. He gave oh. a speech in the Israeli parliament where he said that his father used to show slideshows of Israel as a Church of Scotland minister, which might be the most boring thing that's ever happened. <laughs> that's one step up from Ken Barlow describing the inside of his own eyelids. <laughs> Saturday, it was like a hack comic playing in a room, didn't you? Israel, nice to be here. What about Iran, eh? What a bunch of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> he said in the press he was going to take his sons to Israel so that they can learn about the history of the yeah. suffering of the Jewish people. And his sons were in the background going, Disneyland, we just want to <laughs> yeah, go yeah. to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmadinejad came out and said he wanted to rock wipe Israel off the map. Yes. And you think, is that the Bond villain school of media training? Because don't tell people that's what you're going to do, because they'll try and stop you, surely. <laughs> to be honest, we he know did, so He did, he did about... reveal his end game a yeah. tiny bit too early. Do you not uh, think, <laughs> do you not think Dora, that the... Pro I mean, if, it, if the whole thing is anybody's fault, it's God's, because he managed to put the centres of Judaism, Islam and Christianity within 300 miles of each other. <laughs> and he had the whole world to choose from. And then he, his biggest cock-up was putting the oil there underneath as well. He couldn't put that anywhere. He couldn't put it underneath Belgium, but no, he gave them... <laughs> <laughs> he gave the Belgium... <laughs> no. He could have put it there. He could easily have put it there. Instead, he gave them chocolate and paedophilia. <laughs> so, how does that make any sense? <laughs> yes, you... The whole globe, the whole globe. We could have put. Well, it does make sense. You've chocolate and paedophilia in the same country. That yeah. does make sense. <laughs> I notice he gets body armour, and our troops—they don't get all body armour, do they? If I was in Iraq, not only would I want full-over body armour, I'd want some sort of magnetic deflector shield and a Harry Potter invisibility cloak. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Hang thing on a minute. in the you Middle East, isn't it? Suicide bombing could have been cleared up years ago if they just forced everybody to wear spandex. <laughs> <laughs> OK, back at home, what is currently being shaken up back in Britain? Is it the welfare system? Yes, it is, yeah. I believe uh, Labour, one of their new policies is to try and get various people who are on incapacity benefit working, aren't they? Apparently there are 2.7 million people in Britain on incapacity benefit. I suppose you should look on the bright side. That does mean we should have a cracking Paralympic team. <laughs> I think the incapacity Olympics is a beautiful idea, just because you could, a, a skiving 100 metres where people just kind of don't really want to run uh, and get chased by somebody with, like, a yellow card saying, Apprentice Barman, do you want to do an interview for this? 
Scotland have taken gold, silver and bronze yet again. <laughs> who is it, who is it going to Beijing? Well, it's Dwayne Chambers. Yeah, is it? Which is very sad because I want the athletes to take drugs. I mean, do you want to see someone shave a hundredth of a second off the 100 metres record or do you want to see them run it in three seconds? <laughs> I don't want to see Dwayne Chambers running on steroids. I want to see him running with the legs of a kangaroo and the heart of a leopard. <laughs> I want to see him run so fast that halfway through the race he disappears like the car from Back to the Future, <laughs> reappears at the finish line as an old man who shouts, Beware China, and crumbles into dust. <laughs> If we're going to take Frankie's idea on, how funny would that... How intimidated would you feel as another athlete to see some bloke with kangaroo legs <laughs> and the body of a hawk just going, oh. I'm going to win? Yeah, <laughs> I think you probably are. You're going you're to win the psychological battle with almost any animal body part, Russell. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know it would be great if midway through you got up and you had kangaroo <laughs> legs and you were... <laughs> you think I'd be here if I had kangaroo legs? <laughs> I'd be on Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> uh, Here's a hot topic of question that's burning for me. What have the MOD lost this week? Well, they've lost mm. laptops, haven't they? <laughs> as, as ever, they've lost yeah, yeah. laptops, yeah. The most recent one was lost in the lobby of the Britannia Hotel in Liverpool, where somebody just left it down on the ground and was while checking <laughs> out. Who <laughs> nicked so, that a snake? Yeah. <laughs> somebody just goes... There's people that don't care about their laptops. I don't let my laptop out of my sight just because of the porn history. <laughs> There are these people that are going, oh, where are those plans for destroying Egypt? In the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your laptop is just like this whispering baby that if you let it... It's like whenever someone tries to check your email, you go, can I use your laptop? I'll put you on the website. You don't need to know anything more. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to stand here. Right, hotmail, just Hotmail, just Hotmail, is it? I'll type in Hotmail. <laughs> Hot is a bad one, right? Because you get as far as hot, yeah, and exactly. then that's a world of pain exactly. opening up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know but you feel like your laptop's going, I know stuff, I know stuff about him, shut up! <laughs> it's brutal. You know the whole thing with these things they lose is they always go, oh, don't worry, it's encrypted. Yeah. There's a password. The people that come up with these passwords are not just computer geeks, they're computer geeks who work for the civil service. How hard is it to work out that password? Buffy? No. <laughs> Gandalf, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see, though? There was actually secret documents left on a train yeah, two yeah. weeks ago. The document actually said, uh, for US, UK, Australian and Canadian eyes only, yeah. and anybody who happened to be on the 515 from Waterloo. <laughs> Do you know that it must be terrifying switching on an MOD laptop and that wee paper clip coming up and going, I see you want to destroy the Taliban. Can I help? <laughs> 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 Who is this man and why has he been in the news? The man is very difficult, Radovan Karadic. Oh, yes. Radovan Karadic, yeah. It's, that's amazing. Very good. it's yeah. amazing it took them so long to find him because you would have thought that a name like that would really stand out in a phone book. <laughs> <laughs> they said in the paper that he'd been working as an alternative therapist in uh, Belgrade, but I am almost certain that he was Father Christmas at my children's primary school. <laughs> so if he was Father... He looks like he's killed... Well, he has. But, um... <laughs> How dodgy does he... You'd never hire him as a Father Christmas, would you? You'd hire him as an alternative health therapist, which is how he was working it. This man comes in doing a bit of Reiki and some crystal work on you. Uh, to go, oh, I feel a bit down. I'll tell here. you what, if that man was offering a cure for hair loss, I would go there. <laughs> it's it's great, though, because his neighbours will think that he's a paedophile and it's actually much worse. <laughs> Only he was a paedophile. He looks like he might have crossbred with a badger. That's the... Uh, <laughs> that's one thing that worries me slightly about him. I think he might look more sensible the other way up. <laughs> uh, no, he just looks like a bearded man dangling, which is essentially what's going to happen, probably, uh, <laughs> in The Hague. Uh, so, at the end of that round, the points go to... Russell, Daniel and Andy! <laughs> Now we play a round called 24-hour binge joking epidemic. <laughs> this game involves Greg, Andy, Frankie and Russell. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and then you can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner is the team with the best stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first topic is transport. 
Andy. <laughs> Trains were overcrowded, but of course the train companies, they've got an answer for that, haven't they? What do they say? Well, they say, well, actually, overcrowding is quite a good safety measure because apparently during the Cannon Street rail crash, those passengers that stood up like sardines, they were less badly injured <laughs> than the ones who were sat down. <laughs> now, how can you justify something that's only any good in the event of a crash? <laughs> and what are you supposed to do if your train isn't very crowded? Are you supposed to stand unnaturally close to people <laughs> going, I'm terribly sorry about this, but in the event of a crash, apparently, you're my airbag. <laughs> well done, Andy Parsons. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The next topic is teaching. Who wants to come in on that? Greg. I was a teacher for many, many years, ladies and gentlemen, and I knew the day I had to leave teaching, it was simple, because a very clear sign was given to me that I should leave the profession by a child, because a child walked into my lesson 20 minutes late. I was a very strict teacher. I was livid, yeah? I was almost as mad as if that child had been running in the school corridor, right? <laughs> I thought, I am having this little bastard. I am having this. So I gave him my most ruthless teacher stare when he walked in, something like... <laughs> Maybe not that sexually aggressive. <laughs> it wasn't. That would work. That would work, though, wouldn't it? They wouldn't be late again then, would they? Oh, dear. Where have you been? No, it wasn't right. I was furious. I went, oh, really? <laughs> Oh, really? And I could see that child didn't give a shit, right? And I thought, oh, no, this is the end of my teaching career. And I went, where have you been? And he went, yeah, sorry, sir. I went, really? Are you? Well, where the hell have you been for 20 minutes? And I promise you, that child looked me in the face and went, yeah, sorry, sir. I've been living la vida loca. <laughs> what can you say to that? I said, fair enough, sit down. <laughs> Anyone who quotes Ricky Martin at me, ladies and gentlemen, is a friend for life. <laughs> Well done, Greg. <laughs> so now we have Russell and Frankie. So let's spin the wheel again. The topic is labour. Frankie. <laughs> I don't uh, trust Alistair Darling. I don't trust anyone whose hair and eyebrows don't match. <laughs> I keep wondering what his pubes look like. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he opened his flies and it was just a bunch of daffodils. <laughs> He looks tired as well, darling, but then he does have to commute in every day from Tracy Island. <laughs> Gordon Brown. Gordon Brown looks tired as well. Gordon Brown looks like a sad face that somebody's drawn onto their scrotum. <laughs> Sherry Blair had her autobiography out. Can you imagine what Gordon Brown's wife's autobiography will be like? It'll be less eventful than Anne Frank's. <laughs> Wednesday, stayed in, Gordon cried. <laughs> OK, we're left with Russell. Let's see what subject he has. Let's spin the wheel. And it's childhood. <laughs> so, I, I found this out this week, right, that... Uh, we're giving happiness tests for six-year-old kids. How ridiculous is that? My friend Wendy's a teacher. Twice a year, there you go. Are you happy? I've eaten my crayons. <laughs> which made me happy, so swings and roundabouts, really. <laughs> which I also like. It's just the most <laughs> ridiculous idea some bloke arrived. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What makes you happy? You! Sneezing. You! <laughs> I quite like tickling people. You! <laughs> I like putting marbles up my brother's bum. <laughs> Now, don't judge me. I did that once. I'm not showing off, but when you're eight and your little brother's six, the power you have is incredible. <laughs> You've got to put some marbles up your bum. Why? <laughs> if we get enough in there, you turn into a wizard. <gasps> Fill me up! Fill me up! I will. I will. <laughs> well done, Russell. Points there go to Russell and Andy.
Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Danielle, which category would you like? Uh, technology. OK, your category is technology. The answer is cheese, wine and rubbish. What is the question? What three words best describe France? <laughs> <laughs> Is it name three vital ingredients for a mouse orgy? Vital. <laughs> <laughs> right is it when jumping out of a plane and pulling a parachute cord, what is a bad thing to find that you have packed instead of a parachute? <laughs> is it what is the Bible full of? <laughs> is it? Whoa. OK. I'm with, you, I'm with you about wine and rubbish, yeah. right? <laughs> but where is the cheese, exactly? Uh, the bar... Could be. Could there's bound, be? There is, on the Last Supper, there's bound to be a little bit yeah. of brie sneaking around. <laughs> 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 what did Orinoco Womble try and sneak into rehab? <laughs> <laughs> what do Kerry Katona's children taste when they breastfeed? <laughs> <laughs> Always. Yeah, yeah. Every Katona. week with the Katona stuff, right? Uh, is it name three things that give Stig of the Dump a boner? <laughs> what is Wensleydale, Bordeaux and Croydon? <laughs> I get it. Is it, is it what do Amy Winehouse's tears taste of? Oh. <laughs> is it <laughs> name... <laughs> <laughs> Before Mock the Week started, Andy, Russell and I toured Britain's seaside towns as which well-loved variety act? <laughs> <laughs> but where's rubbish? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, he can't hear you, children. You have to shout even louder for rubbish to appear. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> uh, I made a rubbish. <laughs> what are my ex-girlfriend's pet names for my testicles and penis? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody! <laughs> is it not? These are... The, what are three things that can be used as alternative fuel? That's absolutely right. Well right. done, Hugh. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was what everyday products are being used to develop new fuels for cars. Scientists are trying to create new sources of biofuels from, amongst other things, algae, sugar, trees and artichokes. If we're building fuel from trees, that's rather a mixed message environmentally. <laughs> is, that, isn't it? is it not? It's Prince Charles has developed. He's Aston Martin is powered by um, trees and wine. But what is described by Prince Charles as surplus wine. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. There's an insult not, in a bag, not, isn't it? Uh, I have surplus wine that runs off in my well, vomitorium. Has, well, he, uh, okay. he actually described it as leftover wine from entertaining, which might be the least Scottish concept I've ever heard <laughs> of. <laughs> Oh, there's some leftover wine from when we were entertaining. Shall we drink it? No, let's make a wacky new fuel. <laughs> <laughs> he, he apparently, Prince Charles, he's converted his Aston Martin, a Range Rover, an Audi and two Jaguars to make himself more green. Now, I'm guessing the easiest way to be more green is not to have a Range Rover, <laughs> two Jaguars and Audi. He did, uh, yes, it's his Aston Martin that's running on wine. The, his private secretary said, I think our wine is surplus English wine. It's wonderful. It's not corked. As if the car gives a shit uh, <laughs> why it's or not. None of these things like actually elephant, work. Do you see this every couple of years? Oh, we've got a car that runs in orange juice. It, just, it doesn't ever happen. Science presenters are too nice. The science presenters are always, oh, does it run in orange juice? Let's have a look at it running on these cornflakes. Why don't they just get a science presenter that goes, it doesn't run on rubbish. <laughs> We're not in Iraq because rubbish powers cars. <laughs> we had to tow it into the studio, put some petrol in it and fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see one thing, right? There was, there was this amazing story in the week that they've got a... They're trying to develop a vehicle. It's a good job you didn't see. You'd have headbutted the bloke. <laughs> but there's, there's this idea that, that it's not going to have a steering wheel, but you can control it with your mind. So if you want to go left, you think left. <laughs> you want to go right, you think right. But the problem with that is, of course, the human mind does tend to drift. <laughs> why, did, why did you crash? I was thinking about whether a cat could beat up a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a lot of British people are now using vegetable oil to power their cars. Apparently it works very well. The only downside is that apparently your car smells like a chip shop. <laughs>
<laughs> which isn't necessarily going to help Britain's obesity levels, is it? You know? <laughs> so I see a car go past. <sniffs> oh, I feel a bit peckish. <laughs> you have Scottish people trying to get a Mars bar and sticking it inside people's fuel tanks. <laughs> you know, racist bastard Parsons. <laughs> That's why cheese, wine and rubbish split up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great, though, that we have got cars that can now run on waste. Wouldn't it be brilliant if they invent cars that could run on your own waste? You know? <laughs> oh, it's a good idea, it's a good idea. Well, you know, if you're on a motorway, desperate for a slash, you know, <laughs> police come over, oh, are you urinating in public? No, I'm just filling my tank. <laughs> Why would you even... Sorry, I'm... I'm stay I, in the car. I presume you'd be yeah, in the car, yeah. yeah I presume the part of the seat would slide back in some way. Maybe you want to show like that, just kind of go... <laughs> <laughs> I presume they'd be like, a, oh, no, we're, we're short of petrol. We'll make it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we there yet? Yeah, clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> With gas bills rising, what advice has one executive at Centrica, the owners of British Gas? Oh, oh I love this are, guy. Yeah. Put on two jumpers. Could he be more evil? Yes, why don't they just put on two jumpers? There'll be plenty of jumpers next year in the charity shops once all the old people die during winter. <laughs> why don't you all get a big box of straw and try and hibernate in it like a tortoise? <laughs> if you're having fuel trouble, don't put on two jumpers. Put on a balaclava and find this guy's house. <laughs> Trouble, the trouble with, isn't it? The old people, they always used to struggle in winter. That was traditionally the yeah. thing. Now, <laughs> there was like summer heat wave, wasn't there, a few years ago, and mm. loads of old people died in the summer. They couldn't get their jumpers off. <laughs> <laughs> what was his I think I, the thing for me is that I don't think there's a, any way of gauging how. Um, hot pensioners should be because there is no limit to how hot pensioners seem to want to be. <laughs> now, speaking to, my, speaking to my, my granny, I'm pretty sure I could pour a boiling pan of jam in her face. <laughs> uh, I, I have walked into there and almost turned into a pillar of salt sometimes. <laughs> And to be honest with you, if the heat doesn't get you in that woman's flat, then the speakers on the telly will make you mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> Other than civilians, who else is feeding the pinch? Well, this, this is the RAF. It is the oh, RAF, yes. And they can't, they've decided they can't um, fly anymore because it's too expensive. <laughs> so they're doing virtual flights. They're going to do lots of practice on simulators. Just going around like that. Yeah. yeah. But he's very dangerous. <laughs> it is very, very really dangerous. I, I was looking over there. Did you do the yeah. face? Did you do yeah, it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, no, I always did that for that. Like, yeah, let's go. Is... <laughs> Prince William, now he's going to have to simulate... You know, he won't be able to land in Kate's garden. he have to simulate landing in Kate's garden. Is obviously, that a euphemism? Obviously... <laughs> Obviously, I, I would, you know, I'd love to be able to land a helicopter in my girlfriend's garden, only it's a bit small, you know, I might get entangled in the washing line or kill the rabbit. But, uh... <laughs> I hope you're still not being euphemistic here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to... It's exciting. <laughs> I, I, I'm a man of the world, you don't want to kill the rabbit. <laughs> uh... <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hugh and Gray! Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes. We'd like to see this is for everyone, so if we could all make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios. We'd love to see the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is lines you wouldn't hear in a superhero movie. To the bat caravan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a superhero. Now, Russell, you've drawn an S on your forehead and you sprinkle glitter on your penis. <laughs> no, they call me Catwoman because I can lick my own arse. <laughs> hey, Lois, just before we fly off, I want to check none of your liquids are over 100 millilitres. You're trapped, Spider-Man. Trapped in this enormous bath. <laughs> no, R. Kelly, you can't join the Fantastic Four. It's not enough to believe you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> Biff! Bam! Kapow! Nutted! Bottled! Slashed! <laughs> 
Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Whatever it is, it's heading straight for the World Trade Centre. <laughs> what do you mean? The swastika's already taken. I've had my cape made now and everything. <laughs> so, tell me, why do they call you Flash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I may not seem as dangerous as other supervillains, but soon I, Dr Sheep, <laughs> will rule the world. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> What's that, Joker? You'll be back. Somehow I don't think you will be. <laughs> OK, the next topic is unlikely letters for an agony aunt to receive. Dear Deirdre, I'm leaving you. <laughs> I want to trace my father. Could you suggest a good marker pen? <laughs> <laughs> I have recently discovered the pleasures of butter in sex. I smear it on the doorknob to stop the kids coming in. <laughs> my voice is breaking and there is hair on my chest. Is this normal? You're Sally Jenkins, <laughs> age nine. <laughs> Dear bitch, I have trouble making friends. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Dear Deirdre, can that giant man lift me up like a baby? <laughs> <laughs> you bet your ass is down. <laughs> I have been saving up for a sex change. I don't care what my wife says. She is going to have it! <laughs> Dear Auntie, my testicles are the size of space hoppers. I don't need any advice, I just wanted to tell someone. <laughs> <laughs> my husband and I are 82, and he has recently lost interest in sex. Thank God! <laughs> my wife says that I'm a compulsive liar. I think she's jealous that my reggae duet with Rio Ferdinand has reached number one. <laughs> I know where you live! <laughs> My problem is that I can only ejaculate when I hear a buzzer. <laughs> At the end of that round, points go to Frankie Hugh and Gray. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Greg Davis. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Daniel Ward and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Green. Good night. More comedy coming up here on BBC Two with a bunch of hippie protesters hauling eggs at the Lab Rats. Nice one. Then it's still game at ten.